Welcome to the Late Night Picture Show. I'm Murph the Clown. And this... Even though it's not red... You'd be able to see that if this was a color picture. We're going to call it a poor man's blood and sand. I don't have the fancy cherry liqueur. Just the regular stuff. Scotch. Vermouth. Sweet vermouth. So basically a Rob Roy. And then you add some lemon juice, or orange juice, and some cherry liqueur. And a little piece of orange peel. I told you I'd have a new drink. Welcome to our second Frankenstein double feature. Now last time we did Revenge of Frankenstein, which was Hammer, and we did Lady Frankenstein, which was Euro Trash. <laughs> Tonight, <laughs> our first picture is a universal horror classic. Look at that. Son of Frankenstein. <clears throat> now, pardon me. <coughs> Those allergies are still happening. Oh, look. Look what I did. <laughs> I was going to fix that. But then I thought I'd be cool like Vanilla Ice. Don't we all want to be cool like Vanilla Ice? Basil Rathbone. Boris Karloff. Bella Lugosi. Now I know Basil Rathbone was a big deal. But the headliner? Okay. He does have a cool name. <clears throat> Son of Frankenstein, Lionel Atwill. This looks like the poster, but it looks like it's actually the box for a 12 inch figure, which I wish I had. Lionel Atwill and Josephine Hutchinson, and Donnie Dung Dunnigan, Emma Dunn, Edgar Norton. I told you I was going to get better about naming all the people in these movies. Okay. Son of Frankenstein is a 1939 Universal Picture. Directed by Roland V. Lee. Starring, and I put him in my own order... Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, and Basil Rathbone with an exclamation point. What's he doing in this movie? Isn't he usually a pirate or a romantic leading man? <laughs> Maybe he needed the money. I don't know. <laughs> He's a freaking Shakespearean actor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get back on track. Hold on. This will tune me up. This outing, we have Frankenstein's son, whose name is Wolf. I'm just going to say Wolf. He's played by Rathbone. Returning home with his wife and young child, to live in his dear departed dad, Henry, <clears throat> his dear departed dad's place, or a facsimile thereof. <laughs> After 25 years, people have still not forget, forgotten the name Frankenstein and the terror Wolf's father unleashed upon them. 
They muster up a very lukewarm reception for the Baron and his wife. <laughs> no, they're not happy to have him back. Would you be? Only 25 years ago, <laughs> this monster was unleashed on the village. There might have even been a sequel in that 25 years. Okay, once the family gets settled in, they start to explore a little. I mean, it is a castle. The youngin goes hunting in the woods, while Wolf checks out the collapsed laboratory, where his father once brought the dead to life. There he stumbles upon Igor, played by Lugosi, <clears throat> a cast-out shepherd who was once hanged for his work with Henry Frankenstein. So we've changed assistants somewhere in there. And poor Igor got hung. Once Igor shows Wolf the sleeping body of the creature, Karloff, most recognizable Frankenstein monster, they form an uneasy bond. Wolf becomes determined to bring the creature back to waking life and cure it of any malintent. There I go, sounding like a movie critic again. <laughs> Maybe I am a movie critic. <clears throat> Igor, well, he has other ideas for the creature. See, he wants revenge on the villagers who hung him years ago. I'm not sure exactly how Igor survived this hanging, but he did. And he wants revenge. See that acting? The Burgermeister... Let, let's put this in order. I wrote it out of order. Once the killing begins... The Burgermeister comes knocking on the door. What's going on up there? In that creepy old castle. Well, too proud to admit that he's wrong, Wolf denies the monster's existence right up until the very end. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. I wrote what happened. But unless you read this on my website back in 2009 or something. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Wolf learned his lesson. Let's sum things up. As a child, I mainly recalled this one for the different outfit the monster wore. This is the one where he wore that woolly vest thing. You know, you've all seen the Jack Davis, most Jack Davis illustrations of the Frankenstein monster. He's wearing the woolly vest thing from Son of Frankenstein. As an adult, I found this one long and boring. Little of the sentiment of Frankenstein or Bride of Frankenstein remains. <laughs> and I know I'm going to catch hell for this amongst the film elite, <laughs> but who cast that officious prick, Basil Rathbone? <laughs> he doesn't belong. <laughs> Anyone would be better in the role. Anyone. Nicholas Cage. Take him back to 1939 and make him Dr. Frankenstein. Do it. I dare you. Make a black and white remake of this movie with Nicholas Cage. And I'll be first in line.
This movie is a bit thin. It's not exactly a zero, but yeah. Two's all I can muster. <laughs> well, be sure to stick around for our next feature, which is the Hammer Horror Classic, The Curse of Frankenstein. Not the revenge, the curse. Curse. Now, let's all go to the lobby and make ourselves a drink. I'm not even going to pretend we're going to the real lobby anymore. <laughs> I'm going to finish this drink, and I'm going to make another one. <laughs> See you in a few minutes, kids.